Hi and assalamu alaikum as you already know this is Mahmood Hayat I'm a figurative painter and an art teacher based in Lahore Pakistan I hold drawing and painting sessions at my private studio for passionate individuals so before we begin do support my channel I invest a lot of hours and work into bringing such beneficial art techniques and basically sharing my secrets and experiences with all you guys I would like to confess I don't like to talk that much either I can paint shoot and document my projects or I can just sit and talk about my work but I got a lot of requests to talk so here I am I won't be able to cover everything but I'm going to share as much as possible so do bear with me Recently I happened to have visited uh, these private stables in Lahore and I got some interesting references for my next project This is something serious to note uh, and try to establish this as an artist always try to take out time and get your own references from your local area or ask people to pose for you try not to copy from google try to avoid google and be more genuine and unique in establishing your approach as i stressed uh, before and most of you who have personally been taught in my studio are well aware that i focus on simply four colors right now as you can see i'm mixing black and cadmium red to get dark reddish black and on the other hand ochre and red to get a hot chroma peach which i'm going to use for darker areas and the reddish black for block ins so far pretty simple palette right Whenever you're starting, start with major shapes that you may see when the image is blurred. Uh, your subject should be lit uh, from a single light source, and try squinting your eyes or to you know see how the light affects the structure of the head. You can also use digital aid tools like Photoshop, and you can blur those references just to see what sh shapes appear. Look at how the effects, uh, the light affects the planes of the head, the cheek, which is in pink and ochre spectrum, while the forehead is ochre and green. Similarly, chin is going to transition towards ochre and black, sort of a dull green because of the bone structure underneath the skin. To make this short and easy to understand, the nostrils and nose will be lighter pinks and grays. adding black to your color mixture lessens the chroma values and when we observe natural skin there isn't much color so always add a bit of gray in your mixture and try to reduce the chroma values anyway as for the hair i'm simply applying ivory black and cadmium red mixture blocking in the shape of the head not getting again into details since this is my initial stage as you noticed i applied grayish pinks and titanium white on the areas of the head which are more affected by the light coming from the right side my observation is telling me as the head turns away from the light the chroma values meaning the rich colors will drop down in the intensity in the shadows
Okay, so as I move along the neck and shoulders, you may notice that whenever I'm applying brush strokes, they are two like linear geometric lines. I try to avoid count, uh, contours, just resorting to emphasizing, emphasizing angled geometric planes rather than contours so that I can establish the athletic shape and structure of the young stable boy. This is something to really, uh, try, you know, keep in mind while you're painting, while you're trying to establish um, anything on the canvas. While I'm painting, I always establish and draft reference lines moving from left to the right side. Look at how the shoulder tits, tilts to the visible deltoids. Knowing the anatomy and how the bone structure and muscles react to hand placement in is a research artist should delve into before planning any project. There are certain muscles that are triggered when the fingers move or are placed in a certain position. Being an artist is like being a doctor. Whether you're a painter, sculptor or a conceptual artist, you need to know your anatomy well. And it is not simply about just copying what you see. You need to use your logic. Painting is an impossible path and this path should not be taken lightly. It requires a lot of research and practice to delve into. So paint slow. My best advice is take your time to research, do some segment at a time. Do not do the whole painting at once. Drawing is a problem solving activity, guys. This is what I always tell you. It is a problem solving activity. So solve it on your own pace. It's not a joke.
this is where uh, now I, I, I'm trying to attempt simplest way to paint the drapery in red and which is actually his shirt that he tied up around his waist and the white shalwar kameez he wore that day. Again, I'm trying to paint in loose brushwork, not focusing in details, just major folds and how the cloth wraps around the body, uh, the lower part of the body. So this is it for the second part. I shall be going back to my easel now. Part three is going to be about how roughly uh, I would be laying down the background and how it revolves uh, in the sketch form. So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Allah Hafiz.